Hi, welcome. Today we will learn parts of speech, phrases and clauses and how to analyze them and what their effects are to some extent for the paper Linguistic and Stylistic Analysis of Text. My name is Anusha Ramnathan and I welcome you to this class that we have online. So what is it that we have to start with? We have to start with parts of speech. What does that mean when we talk about what a part of speech is? So we have done this in school. We understand that there are nouns, right? For instance, we have all played animal, place, uh, thing, you know, um, and, and talked about an object and an animal and a place and a thing and, and try to uh, name it with the letter P or something of that sort. And that is what we are talking about. Nouns, they are names of people, places, things, and even ideas, isn't it? Feelings, emotions, such as that, like abstract nouns, etc. So, for instance, when you talk about a noun, you would have something which is like my name, Anusha, or you would have uh, you would have a name of a place like the Himalayas, or you would have the name of a thing like a pen or you would have the name of you know an idea like love right so this is what a noun is what about a pronoun what are pronouns pronouns are things that replace or substitute nouns right for instance, if I'm saying Ram went to the market, he wanted to buy a book, but it Sorry. It was very expensive. You know where I'm going with this. The fact is that if I look at it, Ram is the same as he. They connect. And it is the same as the book and they connect, right? So that is a pronoun. A pronoun is basically something that replaces or substitutes a noun. And we know this, and so we work with this. So what about the other parts of speech? This is some of the parts of speech. Are there other parts of speech? Yes, there are. So let's go to see what they are, right? So what is the next one? We can talk about what is an adjective, sorry. We can talk about what is an adjective, right? An adjective is something that describes, sorry. So an adjective is something that describes a noun or a pronoun, right? It describes a noun or a pronoun. For instance, in this earlier sentence where we have something like it is very expensive, expensive is an adjective right? That is what an adjective does. And so it's important to know what their functions are in order for us to be able to understand what we're going to do with them. Uh, in addition to what an adjective is, we also have something and a very important thing 
which is the verb. The verb is an action. It is basically denoting what is it that someone does. So if I write something as he is smart, then this tells me that he performs the action of being, isn't it? There could be another, he drank water and that tells me that this is an action that he is doing. It could be that there are longer sentences. For instance, there could be something where we are talking about the fact that he may be coming today. Now, if I have this, then I know that there are, this tells me the probability, this tells me that this is going to be in the future, that he may be coming, and then today, of course, tells me when. But we basically have all of these as verbs that tell us something about the verb. So there is a verb that tells me what the main action is, which is coming. And then there is a verb that tells me what the second, what is the tense of the action and what is the probability of the action, the modality of the action, in a sense that's a model verb. What does it mean when I'm saying all this? So let's take up something, what does a verb do? It's very important for us to understand what verbs are. Verbs are basically actions, but verbs are also accompanied by something that we talk about as tense, right? So verbs are tenses as well. So if I draw a timeline where I have something where we talk about the past and the present and the future, I'm not going to be writing everything. If I talk here and I would say had eaten, and I have out here that says had been eating, okay? And here I write, mm, I write ate, I ate something yesterday. And I write here, I was eating or we were eating yesterday, right? And out here, I actually am going to be, you know, this is say the now. So I have something which talks about the now and I am writing here, she has eaten, right? Or I have eaten. And she, she has been eating, or I have been eating. Right? This is tense. And then, of course, she, I eat, and she eats, or I am eating, she is eating, we are eating okay if this is the tense and so on and so forth it goes on here will have eaten uh, will have been eating uh, will eat will be eating right so if we talk about this as a timeline where this part out here is the past, this here is the present, and this here is the future, you understand that there are these aspects of a tense. So this is tense, and then the tense has four aspects. This is the simple past. So what I'm going to do is just move it a bit up and just try and see here. So this has an aspect of the simple past, uh, which is eight. 
then you have the simple continuous right the past continuous that you talk about the simple past continuous so was eating right uh, you also have the past perfect which is had eaten and you have the past perfect continuous which does not exist in any of the Indian languages as far as I know it says had been eaten right now what does this mean when you talk about it and you say that this is the past this is the um, you know the present and the future so on and so forth all of them will have a simple present as it so a present continuous, a present perfect, a present perfect continuous, and so on and so forth, right? So if I'm trying to talk about all of these out here as had eaten, had been eating, ate, etc. So let's take up this aspect. We number these, and we number this as one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So let's say we have these four and these aspects, and we are talking about it. Now, the take up the first three, right? We are taking up had eaten, ate, and have eaten. All of these tell us that the action is complete, isn't it? So when I am saying I had eaten an apple, sorry, should I be doing that? I will use I had eaten an apple. I ate, sorry, I ate. An apple and I have eaten an apple. All of these primarily, if I'm trying to talk and do it on a number line, it tells me of a timeline, not a number line. If this is my now, all these actions primarily are going to be in before the now isn't it they're going to be before the now and if that is the case why do i have why do i have to say i have eaten an apple why do i have to say i had eaten an apple why can't i just say i ate an apple why do we have these aspects and we have them in all languages mind you we have them in uh, Hindi, we have them in Marathi, we have them in Spanish, we have them in French, we have them everywhere. So why do we have them? What is it that it does? What kind of a tense do we have? That's one of the questions for us to ask and to answer. So let's try and do it in another way. I'm going to try and tell you why do we use these tenses, right? So we use these tenses in order to try and these aspects of tenses not the tenses themselves, but we also try and organize information in our head in terms of sequences. So now let's look at this. If I say I reached the bus stop but the bus left. Sorry. Right? This is sentence one, S1. Sentence two is, I reached the bus stop, but 
but sorry but the bus had left okay now what's the difference between the two if i take up sentence one and i ask you could you have got into the bus is there a possibility that you have a chance of getting into the bus in sentence one could you have got into the bus and if you know the answer you if you are in india you're in mumbai and you have seen all of these people run after the buses you know that yes there is a possibility of getting into the bus if you reach the bus stop and the bus left why because the timeline will appear in this way i reached the bus stop right i reached the bus stop and the bus left both of them happen at the same time but in sentence two the timeline says something different if you have reached the bus stop but the bus left there is a problem here because if i'm taking this as my timeline basically i reached the bus stop the bus had left is it and that is why and how aspects are used they tell you the sequence of actions right and they show you that one of the sequence of action is over and complete it is perfect it is complete or it is interrupted and we are not going to get back to it. And so you have the perfect. So the perfect has this aspect where we want to emphasize uh, completion of action, right? Uh, why do we use a perfect? So let's look at that. Why do we use a perfect? I'm going to kind of try and do this. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. We use the perfect for primarily three reasons. One is to emphasize completion of action. So I want to say that, hey, you know what? I finished doing my job. I finished this action that I have. So I want to use the perfect for that. I also, so for instance, you know, we know this all the time when someone comes to us and says, hey, uh, did you, did you uh, pay the bill? And you're like, yeah. And then they come and ask you again, did you pay the bill? Yeah. And then they I said, I have paid the bill, right? That's how we emphasize that we have completed an action. And so that is what the, uh, that is one of the uses of the perfect aspect the other use of the perfect aspect is to indicate the sequence of actions right so i may want to indicate the sequence of actions and that is uh, what this was about had left and reached so that indicates the sequence of actions right so I had left, which is the first one, and I reached, which is the second one, tells me that there is a sequence of actions. The other and the third reason why we um, use the perfect is also that it indicates a secondary action. 
what does this mean? It means that if someone says, uh, I had told you this, and they stop, stop and you're like, uh, uh, so? Or what teachers love saying to their students, and I, I do that all the time also, I had told you that you had to study, you know, uh, on 18th was the exam. So there's a lot of, you know, um, secondary implied actions that come in there. So there is a lot of implied action. It implies an action. What does that mean? So try and take up this other thing that we have, which we always use when guests come. When guests come, we have an example which talks about the fact that um, the guests have arrived. You know, mehman a gaye hai. So the guests have arrived. And if we look at this as an element, you understand what it implies. Why do we say the guests have arrived? Why can't we say the guests arrived? Why do we have to use have arrived? We could just say the guests have arrived, right? I mean, that's true. That's true because they finished the action of arriving, but we always say the guests have arrived. What does this have really do? What does this have? Why should we have the have, right? And the reason for this is that this tells us and it indicates to us inside the home, um, you know, come out and serve the, greet the guests, come out and serve tea, uh, come out and uh, stop making noise, um, uh, clean up the room, uh, you know, it, it has an implied action. And this is implied. This is not something that is, uh, that is necessarily always stated. It is just implied. And that is something that it indicates, the perfect. When I say, you know, I have dropped the pen and, then I just wait because I'm like, I have dropped the pen. So I want you to come and pick it up or uh, something of that sort. It, it, there's very often an implied secondary action when we use the perfect. Otherwise, we could just say the guests arrived also, right? I mean, what's the harm in saying that? So now that we talked about the perfect, let's go back to this timeline and try and see what does the timeline say about uh, why do we use a continuous, you know, was eating, word eating? Why do we have to use the continuous? This is an interesting aspect, isn't it? Why are we saying that uh, I was eating? Why can't I just say I ate? What is the difference between saying I live in Mumbai and I uh, am living in Mumbai? What's the difference? You know, the continuous. Why do we use the continuous aspect? Right? Why do we use it? So let's take up this as an element and you say, I am going to go with the same sentence that I gave. I am living in Mumbai versus I live in Mumbai. And you know, we have heard this a lot. So what is the difference? Nothing. Let's take up another one. I was playing. Sorry. I was playing for four hours and I played for four hours. Is there a difference here? What about when your parents or as parents, when children are told, you know, it is never, do we ever, ever say, 
Oh, child, you were studying for four hours? Do we say that? Do we say you were studying for four hours? Or do we say, hmm, you studied for four hours? Is that how we say it? It's, and that tells you a story. Because if I just change this word of you were studying for four hours to you were talking for four hours or you were playing for four hours, you know, if I change the I to the you, and I would say you were playing for four hours versus you played for four hours. You know which one parents will say. Parents will always choose this, right? Parents. And parents will choose this to say. Parents. Children will say, I played for four hours and I was studying for four hours. And that is all the difference in the world because you know that when children are going to be saying this and children are going to be saying this, you understand that even without our knowing why we are using it, we unconsciously are automatically using this correctly because this is telling us the impact. Continuous. And the continuous aspect is used okay it's used to emphasize duration of action in the perfect, it was used to emphasize completion of action. In this, it is used to emphasize the duration of action. So you want to say, you were studying for four hours. And if you were reporting it, you would say, you studied for four hours. Hmm, okay. So it emphasizes that. It is also used to indicate, and that is another thing why we use it all the time. It indicates simultaneity of action sometimes. So while it was raining, I had tea and pakodas. Okay. While, uh, so an example of this will be that, right? Uh, While it was raining, I had tea, right? And pakodas maybe. But it basically is telling me that this action was going on when the other action took place. And if you try and substitute it with, you know, I was walking on... I was walking when I saw the accident. And what does this mean? Does this mean when you were walking and you saw the accident? What does this mean? Why would you say I was walking when I saw the accident? Would you continue walking? Would you stop? Would you pause? Would you stop your action completely? Would you sort of slow down and then continue? So what this is doing is in a way telling us that there is an action that was ongoing. And then there is this kind of break. And there are possibilities. There is a possibility that the action may continue, right? 
that is a possibility. There is something else that may happen. The action may completely stop. That is a possibility, right? There is a possibility that the action may continue. That is a possibility. Or there is a possibility that some other action may take place or this action may reverse completely, right? So you may have something where it does something else. Don't know. You don't know anything. It may be that it accelerates. It may be that it decelerates. It may be that it changes. We don't know. And this, this is basically the third reason of emphasized duration of action, indicates simultaneity, right? It, the third one is that it indicates a possibility of interruption. It is not definite, it is just possible. So I was sleeping when the phone rang. Did I wake up? Did I not? I don't know. And do you use this in some kind of literature? Think about it. In literature, all the time, whenever we're talking of suspense, we will talk about it and say, he was going down the stairs. It was raining outside. The dogs were howling. There was knocking on the door. The lights were flickering. And then pause. And there's a break. And then there's another new chapter. And that is the action of suspense because this is the possibility of interruption. So this is used a lot in literature to build suspense, you know, there is a break in action. That is what the continuous aspect is. Then of course we have something that we talk about as the sum that is never there in any Indian language or such, as such which is this aspect, you know, I had been eating. What does it even mean, I had been eating? I had been eating has nothing to do with anything. So what is I had been eating? I had been eating is basically perfect continuous. And why do we use a perfect continuous? Because someone got bored and they decided we have to use it, maybe. So we use a perfect uh, continuous, whether it's past continuous or present continuous or future continu perfect continuous, we use them in order to try and indicate that it is emphasizes completion of Of an action that took place for some time. What does that mean? It means, for instance, if I want to say that uh, I went to the market that my mother had been speaking about for days, right? So the mother had been speaking about this market for many days, but she finished speaking. Maybe she died, maybe she's not well, maybe she is fed up with this boy for not going to the market when she wanted him to go, but she had been speaking about it and it went on for a significant amount of time. So that is what you talk about in the perfect continuous. 
And if there isn't any reason to use all of this, we use the simple present or the simple past or the simple future, right? So that is what you have to understand about the timelines and you have to look at it. There's a lot more to do, deal with it, but we don't have to get into it so much right now. One of the things that we will have to focus upon is the fact that in addition to all that we were doing as adjective, as a verb, as noun, pronoun, I have not forgotten, we are still on parts of speech. There is this very interesting thing called the adverb, right? What does the adverb do? The adverb is also a descriptor like the adjective, but it describes It describes a verb, of course. An adverb and an adjective. It describes adverbs, it describes adjectives, uh, and it describes verbs. So that might be the better way to write it, right? Describes verbs, adverbs, and adjectives. Uh, for instance, and one in example is what I'll give you, uh, we may have, which is, uh, I should have used the black, but anyway, so you have an example which talks about uh, he ran fast. How did he run? He ran fast. So what is it out here? This is an adverb, right? How fast did he run? He ran very fast, right? So, in this case, fast is describing how he ran. It is an adverb. Uh, and very is describing fast and it is an adverb. Similarly, you can have something where you could say, uh, she is very beautiful. And then in this case, very is an adverb that is describing beautiful, which is an adjective, isn't it? So that is how an adverb functions. Important to know what an adverb is in order to understand clauses. What else do we have in parts of speech? We also have, of course, the, uh, the preposition. Uh, the preposition basically announces or it explains, it indicates the position of a noun. With respect to time and space, it basically is that, that is what a preposition does. Right, so what does that mean in terms of that? Um, uh, you know, he was in the room, for instance. He was in the room. So it tells me where he was, so inside, right? So inside, outside, through, about, off, on, at, on, etc. All of those basically tell you a lot about what a preposition is. Um, another one that we have is the conjunction. The conjunction is something that joins two ideas, phrases at the word level, at the sentence level, at the phrase level, it could be uh, anything that uh, the conjunction is joining. So, 
And is a conjunction. Uh, I would like, would you like tea or coffee? Right? So, would you like tea or coffee? And that is your uh, or. And that is what the or does. And that's it. Voila. Uh, you also have things like an interjection. Wait. Speak it up a bit. Yeah. So you have an interjection. An interjection is basically an exclamation of emotion, of happiness, or whatever. So, um, sorry. This would be, ah, I am so glad to see you here. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. God. What are you talking about? You know, it could be anything that you are basically interjecting. And so, yeah, whenever you use these words in terms of, um, you know, uh, what is their function, you will have to understand whether it, it is a noun, but it functions like an interjection. What is it? And the last one that you have to be aware of is something that's called a determiner. A determiner. No, actually the second last. A determiner is, uh, you know, things like a, and, the, that, you know. So a determiner basically explains to you that it determines, is it some, is it, is it the boy or is it a boy in the market, you know, it is a boy or is it the boy? And so this one is a determiner. Hmm? It determines for you which one am I talking about or am I talking, talking about, about some random person? That's what a determiner is. And of course, there's another thing that is called an enumerator. And an enumerator basically is, sorry, that happened. An enumerator is basically something that is a number. It could be a cardinal number or it can be an ordinal number. No problem in either. What is it? It can be one or it could be first. Right? First. Either way, it doesn't matter. It is an enumerator. Now, so what were the parts of speech that we looked at? We looked at the parts of speech that basically, if I have to uh, make it small and show it to you, it is, uh, we, we looked at the parts of speech which was nouns, adjectives, verbs, pronouns. We looked at adverbs, right? And preposition and conjunction, and interjection, and determiner, and enumerator. Now, I also use the black for these words. These words are never, ever used in, you know, the, you have to understand, these words basically never change and you don't really find them changing ever, right? So these are known as the closed class. And the pronoun is also a closed class. Okay, now what does it mean when I'm saying closed class and open class and stuff like that? It 
primarily is uh, let's do it in another way um, to close this what does a closed class and an open class mean okay so a closed class and let's go here to try and see here as a new word again so if i can add new words to any class if i can say um, fanta majorical you know i make up a word i can come up with a new uh, noun which is like his name is uh nie you know new one or phantom majorical or anything like that so if you can coin new words open class is basically when you can coin new words it allows for new words okay it allows for new words and which are these open class categories uh open class categories are your noun uh open class categories are nouns because you can make up new words all the time they are adjectives because you can again make up all this phantom majorical etc they are adverbs and they are verbs so that is basically what uh, you know these are the open classes because you can make up new words like google or twitter or tweet or uh, you know insta me or ig me or whatsapp me all of these are new words that have come about as verbs and adjectives and all of these right like what is he doing he's googling everything right so you have these new words that have come up uh what a closed class closed class are words that very rarely if at all if ever allow for the inclusion of uh new words so generally you cannot have new words it is generally it's not that you cannot ever have but cannot or do not encourage new inclusions right so years have gone by and right uh, and you still have no new pronouns to a large extent or you don't have new um, um, determiners like the or a or an or anything of that sort so closed class is basically determiners uh it is interjections come in the open class category actually interjections can be used here uh so i'm not writing them out here but yeah you can determiners uh is a closed class enumerator is a closed class you don't generally have a new number that comes up uh prepositions conjunctions and pronouns so while the gay community etc are trying to bring in something like the z for instead of the he or the she it's a movement that has not yet taken out in that sense so yeah we have to see 
right? So this is the closed class. You have to know what the parts of speech are. You have to also know their short forms. So in the case of nouns, and I'm going to just take it up out here and we move out to this part. Right, out here. So, noun, N, capital N, okay, pronoun, capital P, small n, adjective, A, J, Adverb A B Verb V. If there are multiple verbs and the main verb has a capital V and the smaller verb has a small V. So this is the capital V and this is the small V. Uh, you also have a conjunct, a preposition. That's how you go in the order. That is the small p, okay? So what you have is, this is the large p, this is the small p, okay? A conjunction, c, j. Interjection, you've right, it is, I, J, then determiner, it is small d, and enumerator, and that is small e. You have to remember these because this kind of is the way that you will have to write in the exam. So what do you write in the exam? Uh, if, I, if you understood all of this, what you have to write in the exam is basically a sentence. So let's look at a sentence that would have this feature. Uh, I, went to the party yesterday. Now, what are these kinds? You have to write here, I pronoun, isn't it? Pronoun, went verb to preposition the determiner party noun yesterday when so adverb so ab and that is your that is how you identify the parts of speech of a sentence and this is what you have to do in the question 2d basically this is what your question to D deals with. Identify the parts of speech. Of course, it has a longer sentence, but this is what it deals with. You should be able to also identify whether they are closed class or open class, and that is what we did in that sense right so it would be a longer sentence it would be more complex but it's basically what you have to do you just have to do this and this is how the answer paper will also look in the exam and uh, you just have to leave enough space and write on and try and practice so practice away and continue with the classes this is about parts of speech and that is basically what you would have in any kind of exam or anything of that sort. 
I hope you enjoyed it. This is the entire thing that we were doing. Today we just looked at the parts of speech in terms of the phrases and clauses in order to move to the phases and clauses of linguistic and stylistic analysis. We looked at what nouns are, what pronouns are, what adjectives are, what verbs are, what are the different reasons we use certain of these aspects of the verb like the perfect or the continuous or the perfect continuous and also, what are the other kinds of adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, interjections, determiners, enumerators? We looked at which is the open class or the closed class. And we looked at what the short forms for these are. And we looked at how we will solve them in the exam, right? This, this part is your answer paper this is how you will solve it question 2d okay that's it have fun i hope you in liked it and i hope that you could understand what i was trying to explain if you have any doubts leave them in the comment section and maybe one of us can come and try and solve them okay happy learning